I'm Michele Geraci, Italian. I'm the former Under Secretary of State for Italy, responsible for trade. I'm also a professor of finance uh, at uh, both uh, Nottingham University and uh, New York University in China. My first visit was in the early 90s, so about 25 years ago, just as China was going through the transformation of uh, its economy. And it was indeed uh, a, an experience to see China and memories I have was in Shanghai cranes, uh, highways being built, noise and dust, uh, you could feel that the city was going through a completely uh, change. The Beijing Olympics in 2008, so I think was one of the most amazing times in China history. Right, so I talked to many people, journalists, uh, even athletes, I saw them very surprised. I think they had an idea that China was still a developing country in the sense that we used to think when we look at the south of the world and instead they saw highways, high-rise buildings, a fantastic bird's nest, the Olympic infrastructure is, was you know, first class in the world and so they suddenly woke up to the idea that China was coming out of age and becoming an economic power. In the last 10 years I've been uh, living almost permanently in China, in a way lucky enough to see a transformation of uh, many industries, for example, uh, the transport sector. Ten years ago, there were only 100 kilometers of high-speed train. Today, there is about 40,000 kilometers. So I've seen not just the development of this hardware, but also the change of the way people live, think, uh, and work in China, thanks to the development of this infrastructure. So I'm a big fan as an economist of seeing transport uh, uh, be the driver of economic growth and transformation. And this is indeed what uh, we're trying to also do here in Italy. So in 2018, I became under Secretary of State. Uh, and I was called by uh, the Vice Premier of Italy at the time, uh, uh, Salvini, uh, because of my knowledge and experience in China. I was the one that really pushed for Italy to join the Belt and Road because I did see the benefit for Italy to cooperate with Chinese companies. And we signed a memorandum of understanding between China and Italy, the so-called MOU on the Belt and Road, which basically sets a framework for Italian and Chinese companies to work together, uh, cooperate together on development of infrastructure. When the President Xi came to Italy, I actually met him several times at a couple of dinners. He also came to my hometown, Palermo. We had a chance uh, the day before to engage on a business, government, government side, and the day after to be more relaxed in a different uh, setting, almost as a tourist. Being able to speak Chinese with him, uh, his wife, and the whole delegation added an extra layer in the friendship. The significance of the Belt and Road today, in my view, is almost the same as the one uh, when Marco Polo went to China. You know, the geography hasn't changed. Italy is still, as it was uh, 100 years ago, at the center of the Mediterranean. Italy is uh, still uh, the country that has one of the longest coastlines, so it's open to trade, port, so it's a natural terminal of the Belt and Road now as it was uh, during Marco Polo time. So I thought that signing the Belt and Road for Italy was a natural uh, crowning, let's say, of what people uh, many years ago started doing it, uh, to stimulate trade, just as it was done before. If, if Italy were to leave the Belt and Road, there would be disastrous economic consequences. Italy sells to China about 50, 50 billion US dollars of goods. That it's about uh, two and a half, uh, three percent of our uh, GDP. None of us analysts believe that if Italy were to do this uh, uh, wrong move to exit the Belt and Road, it, the relation could continue as uh, before. 
that's not the case. It's like telling a girlfriend, we split up, but we will be friends. It's kind of not something you want to bet on. I think the relationship between Italy and China will continue to flourish in the long term because it's a natural partnership. Italy's biggest competitor is France and then Germany. They are both customers and competitors because we produce similar goods, manufacturing, machinery, or fashion, food, and wine. Uh, we compete on ports, uh, between Italian ports and uh, Hamburg. China is far away, and the rest of Asia and Africa are far away from Italy geographically, that allow us to have a prosperous relationship uh, without being direct uh, competitors. I continue my, my job in between uh, politics and academia. Uh, which I think is a nice area to be in because on one hand uh, you have the time and the freedom to analyze possibilities, opportunities, challenges and at the same time I can help them uh, understand a little bit more about China and I think uh, with the increase of understanding uh, like we do in finance uh, you lower the perception of risk and when you lower the perception of risk you increase the propensity to do things together and this is the goal.